Well, the, the conventional marine turbines are quite similar to the wind turbines that we're all used to seeing around us now. So they're open bladed. In contrast, ours has a shroud or a duct around the rotor and the rotor is actually much smaller. So the presence of the duct or the shroud actually accelerates water through the rotor. And I guess the rotor is the expensive bit, so the smaller you can make that, the better. That's absolutely right. It becomes much more economic to make the rotor smaller. And I guess putting in a shroud protects it a lot as well. Well, yeah, it protects it from impact. Uh, it also has the benefit of shielding the rotor acoustically. So it makes, uh, re has a reduced noise signature and less impact on the marine environment. I guess you still have problems however strong you make the device itself if you get hit by something really, really large. Absolutely, and we're looking to design our turbine so that it actually absorbs impact rather than trying to resist it. And it's actually movable as well, so it can tend to move out of the way if it's hit by a large object. So rather than rigidly attaching it to the seafloor, it's sort of floating? That's right, yeah, it's uh, based on a series of tethering lines down to the seabed. I guess the one problem I could see with building a duct and then having a very fast rotor in the middle is that you tend to mash things, fish. You'd have thought it would be a wonderful fish mincing machine. Well, that's right. But what we've managed to do is we have a two-blade row system. So we have a, a stator, we call it, a static rotor upstream of the rotor. And that imparts a swirl onto the fluid motion inside the duct, which actually means we can slow down the rotor which makes it more fish friendly. It makes it uh, more resistant to debris because debris tends to pass through rather than being captured in a, in a fast moving rotor. So unlike a wind turbine where it sort of changes the direction and speed of an awful lot of air just a little bit, yours, defle yours is deflecting water to a very, very large angle so it doesn't have to be moving so fast. That's exactly right. So we're at your secret test site here. Um, so I guess you've got a machine inside? We certainly do, yeah. Uh, so we've <laughs> not quite diverted, but almost diverted a river. And we've got quite a fast flowing current through a water tunnel that we've built down here. And we can sit any of our, any of our model concept turbines down in there and measure the power that they develop. So how much power can you generate from this kind of setup? Well, at the moment, we've got a very small turbine in there because it costs a lot to model at a large scale. Uh, we're, we're currently generating about 500 watts, which is <laughs> enough to power half a kettle, I think, something like that. But the, the power output scales uh, with the proportion of the area. So our run of river turbines, we're looking to produce around about five kilowatts. Our tidal turbines, which are a bigger commercial scale, around about a megawatt of power. So having started off designing these tidal turbines, where are you going to use them first? Well, developing a tidal turbine is a very expensive business. Uh, it's in the region of uh, 30 million pounds to get your first prototypes actually into the sea and, and, and being tested. And that's before you've even done any of the ongoing development work. So um, it's a very big challenge for a small company to, to raise that sort of money. So we're taking it in, in two small, smaller chunks. So the first market we're going to head for is Run of River. And these are significantly smaller turbines in the region of a metre in diameter. I guess uh, you don't want to make them too big because they wouldn't fit in the river. Well, that's right. Yes, yes. So you, you've got limitations of depth and things. But, uh, you know, the sort of market that we're talking about are sort of like remote communities, rural communities in, in developing countries. Um, where you know, they're, they're miles away from any grid connection, so that they need sort of like locally generated electricity. So whilst it might seem expensive in this country at the moment, there it's actually cheaper than the standard equivalent. Absolutely, and, and you know the option that that's, um, sorry the technology that we, we'd be looking to replace would be uh, diesel generator type technologies. And uh, here, you know, you've got to have um, all the spares need to be transported up up to, you know, to the location. Uh, and on top of that, you've got all the fuel as well, which is, a, you know, you need a regular supply. And if you're sort of like faced with a, a week's journey up the river to, to get the fuel to, to where it's used, you know, that's, that's a significant cost. So have you given up on building tidal turbines totally? Or? Oh, no, absolutely not. No, no. The idea is that we would uh, develop the technology at a small scale for the run of river application. And then as um, we get better with with the technology we will then scale up for the the tidal turbines in in probably in europe initially 
are you learning a lot by doing this? Yeah, certainly. I mean, one of the we do a lot of computational simulations and so on, and one of the difficulties is that we can't simulate the impact of debris. And you learn a lot from actually physically doing it. So we're developing new, new ways and new ideas of making the rotor resistant to debris. We've got a lot of leaves. We actually had a problem with conkers from upstream <laughs> coming out old rotten conkers from the riverbed and pelting the turbines. So I guess in a real situation you've got shipping containers or if you're in a That's river right. then yeah. just trees floating down. Yeah, we were talking to someone based in Alaska who's interested in our run of river turbines and he was saying that the problem there is that they have whole trees floating down. You know, there's a 10 metre deep river that he's talking about with gigantic trees vertically just floating down the river. So you need to have something quite unconventional really to be able to resist that.